Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of modeling with kinetic and potential energies. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as this really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're gonna be working on today. So part A, this is a baseball problem and part A of the problem is just, I'm not gonna read it, but we have some baseball player that throws a baseball at 41 meters per second and part A is just uh, find the kinetic energy. They're also giving you the mass, so that should be easy enough. Part B is saying that uh, this baseball playing for whatever reason is throwing a baseball at some jello. So basically what happens is um, he throws the baseball at the jello, so it starts at a certain velocity, the 41 meters per second, and then it's the jello just stops at that and because the jello is stopping the baseball the jello gets a little heated up and we basically have to draw an energy interaction diagram describing the scenario and we have to figure out the change in temperature of the jello after the baseball comes to rest and uh, part c i think that we're just gonna read it once we get to that part and i'll just put the uh, instructions back on the uh, screen for you guys so as you can see, I have everything uh, over here. So for part A, I do have my mass of the baseball and my velocity. Uh, should be easy enough. All I have to do is substitute uh, these equations. So, so far, so good. Let's just go ahead and do that. Um, so part A is kinetic energy of the baseball is equal to one half mass baseball uh, B squared. So um, um, let's just call it initial just to help us out on part B. So this would be one half the mass is, oh, we have to do this uh, kilograms. So 0 0.145, and then your velocity is already meters per second, so 41 squared. So just go ahead and figure that out. So we have one half, 0 0.145, 41 squared, 121.8, and because I did change this to kilograms, this is standard units, which is uh, joules of energy. Okay, so now for part B. So for part B, we have to draw an energy interaction diagram and calculate the change in temperature uh, for the jello. All right, so let's just... So the scenario is basically like on your initial, you have a ball going at 41. Well, let's just a ball that has 121.87 joules of energy, and then you have your jello over here. The jello is not moving, so initially it's just on the ground, it doesn't have any energy. And then your final is that you know it stops, V is equal to zero. And because this energy disappeared, well, it changed, that means that this energy got absorbed by the jello and because the jello is not really moving and it's on ground level that must mean that some other energy changed in this in this case they are telling you that it was kin um, thermal energy so we have to figure um the change in temperature sorry i'm spacing out okay so we uh, go back to our instructions how to make a complete full credit energy interaction diagram so I've used this plenty of times, every single video I've shown this, so let's just go ahead and do it. Uh, so our system, in this case, is the ball, the baseball ball, plus the uh, jello. Initial, we have two components, so ball is uh, going at a velocity of 1 to 1.87, jello just doing nothing stationary 
at a certain initial temperature, I guess, and then your final would be uh, your ball is B final is equal to zero because it stopped. And then your yellow uh, has some final temperature that's going to be greater than your initial temperature. And I'll show you why that's the case in a second. Uh, in this case, the instructions say that we should neglect air resistance and the effects of gravity. That means that this system is closed. So I'm just going to do a solid line. And we're only going to have two types of energy, kinetic energy for the ball, thermal energy for the yellow. So the ball is going to be losing kinetic energy because it lost all of its velocity. Velocity initial was 41. B final is equal to zero. And this must mean if this is a closed system that for the yellow, its thermal energy must have gone up which means that its temperature must have gone up, which is why I was very sure about this part over here, even though the problem doesn't say so explicitly. This is a closed system and we know this went down, so this must have gone up. So you had a certain initial temperature and then your final must be greater than, than the initial. So now what we do is basically put this on an equation to get full credit for our answer. And then based on that, we'll figure out delta T. So changing kinetic energy from the ball plus change in E thermal uh, yellow is equal to zero. So now I substitute these two equations. So one half, this is for the ball, so I'm using mass of the ball. So I'm using 0 0.145. Um, again, you wanna do kilograms just so that this is kept in joules. Uh, B squared. Oh, I already had this. Okay, so you know what? I already had this uh, calculation. Well, I'm just going to copy it again just so that I can literally subtract zero from it so that I'm extra clear in my answer. Uh, final minus initial. So final is zero minus initial. That would mean 41 squared like this. So this is zero minus this number so this is minus 121.87 plus uh this is mc delta t but in this case it's uh we're doing jello so the mass of the jello is uh, oh here it is 4.3 c of the jello is 3800 and it's already in standard units and then delta t, which we want to find, this must be equal to zero. So, uh, 4.3 times 3800, 16340 delta t is equal to zero. So I have this equation right here. So the only thing that I'm gonna do at this point is um okay yeah looks good so the only thing that i'm going to do at this point is solve for delta t delta t is equal to 121.87 positive because it's on the other side of the equation divided by 16340 delta t in this case is equal to uh 121.87 divided by one six three four zero zero point zero zero seven four five and this answer would be in kelvins like this final answer well i guess it, it's also celsius when you think about it, just because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between um, 
the both of them so it's it's a change so that's that's fine both ways when you think about it um all right so now let's just go ahead and put uh part c on the screen and part c says uh madison Baumgartner is working on his curveball with a pitch with a different velocity after throwing it into the bath of the jello he detects a rising temperature of 0 0.0032 celsius what was the velocity of the baseball? Hint, feel free to reuse the energy conservation statement you got from the energy interaction diagram from part B. Okay, so basically now what we have is delta T. So delta T for part C is um, 0 0.0032. He's saying Celsius, but this is also a change in Kelvin's because again, there's a one-to-one -one relationship uh, when it comes to deltas. So it works just as well. Uh, so before they gave you the velocity and you have to figure out delta T. Now they're giving you delta T and you have to figure out the velocity. But the reason why they are telling you that you can recycle this is because the process is exactly the same. The only thing that's changing is what you know and what you don't know. But the equation, it's like the uh, physical system is the same, the process is the same. The only thing is what you know um, is changing. So we are just going to go ahead and recycle this pretty much. So delta K E ball plus E thermal. is equal to zero. Uh, so this is one half m ball um, delta b squared plus mc, uh, this is yellow, delta t is equal to zero. For this part, we have one half, the mass of the baseball is 0 0.145. And then the process is the same. At the end, you lose all your velocity. So this is zero squared minus initial, which is the uh, initial velocity that we're looking for. And then this is mass of yellow, which is 4.3. C for yellow, which is 3800. And then the delta T that they're giving you. So this is 0 0.003. Two, this has to be equal to zero because energy is conserved. So now we just multiply a bunch of things again. So B I squared is equal to, let's just uh, go ahead and do that. 4.3 times 3800 times 0 0.0032. 52.288 divided by um, 1 half 0 0.145 0 0.0725 the negatives go away and then I have to take the square root um, 52.288 divided by 0 0.0725. So this is 721, but this is the squared. So if I take my answer, uh, take the square root, I get 26.85 meters per second final answer. So this is basically how we do it. This is uh, energy interaction. We've been doing this day and night. Uh, it's always kind of like the same steps. What's different is the energy is interacting. And from B to C, we basically had to do the same process. I guess it was a chance for students to uh, make up a little bit of points, even if they somehow messed part A. Um, I don't know. But yeah, so this was a very interesting a uh, practice problem, not too difficult, not too hard. I really enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys have found this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. If you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.